This is my new Shirai battery that I bought from my Royal Enfield motorcycle. Uh, I talked to the Shirai people at the Cycle World show and they made all kinds of amazing claims about the battery being four pounds or five pounds lighter than a stock battery, uh, maintaining a charge for a year without having to be charged up. Uh, let's look at the box. There's a whole bunch of crazy claims on the box. The, uh, let's see. Extreme rate cell technology. I don't know what that means. No more dead batteries. Holds a charge for one year without maintenance. Ultra light. One fifth of the weight of lead acid batteries. Twice to four times the service life of a lead acid battery. Drop in replacement for your OEM battery. Military spec carbon fiber composite case. Faster cranking for better starts. Super fast recharge rate. Safe. No explosive gases. Environmentally friendly. Just discharge and dispose. Japanese and a two-year warranty. So, um, I mean, the two to four times the service life means this thing should last until long after I'm dead, which was a selling point. Uh, you don't have to add water to it. Um, it'll hold a charge for a long time without maintenance, so if your bike sits for a while, you just fire it right up and it'll work. Uh, let's see what's in the box. In the box, there is an important warning before we get the box open. Standard lead acid chargers may be used, however, lead acid chargers with the desulfation mode maintenance chargers or trickle chargers may not be used under any circumstances. So my cycle tender won't work on this, apparently. And I don't know what all this means. I just always thought a charger was a charger. So it makes me a little nervous about putting it on a charger, should I ever have to do that. So this is my standard battery up here. So when we open up the box, we see a little teeny tiny battery. Now when the guy showed me this at the show, I thought it was an empty battery box, just a demo box, because this thing is incredibly light. And you can see it's also a different size than my stock battery significantly. So what else is in the box is all these giant uh, rubber bumper stickers. So you take these these big rubber blocks and they've got uh, adhesive backing on them and you build yourself a battery until it fits the size of the original battery. Um, you can see the terminals they're pretty close to in the same place as the other battery. I've read some people online saying that they had trouble connecting it to where the old battery went because the cables didn't have enough play in them. That's not going to be a problem on the Royal Enfield. In fact, if you're a custom bike builder, you should be pretty excited about this because it's a lot easier to hide this somewhere than it is to hide a big giant lead battery. Um, it's no maintenance. You can lay it down and hide it just about anywhere. You could even carry it in your pocket and run wires to the... No, I'm kidding. But, you know, you could, you could hide it just about anywhere. Um, we're going to take a look at where it fits on the Royal Enfield, too, just to see how... Uh, how we might want to sneak it in there. But first I want to take a trip to the post office and use their scale because me saying it's light is different than me showing you how light it is. You just won't believe the numbers that we get on the scale. So we'll take a little field trip and do that and then I will show you my plan with the Royal Enfield bullet. Alright, here we are with the batteries, the standard lead acid battery and the new Shorai battery and the scale at the post office. So first of all, let's measure the lead acid battery that came out of the bike. I filled it up so it has proper amount of water in it and it comes out to 4 pounds 11.5 ounces. Put the Shorai on the scale and we get 15.6 ounces. So it's almost four pounds lighter than the other battery. That's amazing. Now for reference, I brought some D batteries. So three D batteries on the scale weigh in at 15.2 ounces. So this battery that's going to run my motorcycle weighs about the same as three D batteries. That is incredible. This is the Royal Enfield Bullet, and you can see this big unsightly battery box is where the old battery was kept. You put the new Shirai battery in there, 
and you can see how much smaller it is than the the one that comes with the bike so I could either shim this out and shut that or I could get rid of this whole battery box and have more of a, an old-fashioned kind of custom clean through view I don't know the right terminology but a lot of a lot of customizers will get rid of the battery box get rid of this oil catcher can and then you can see air straight you know daylight straight through the bike and because this battery is so tiny and because it doesn't leak acid we could even stick it in this toolbox here. I'm going to zoom in on that. Now the box has a hole in it with a grommet right here where wires are coming into it. It's got a brake light switch here. But this battery could very easily sit right in here and not disturb any of those. You could run the positive and negative wires through here to the battery and then get rid of the battery box entirely and just keep your battery in there. Uh, if I do that, I'll make a video about it. It's pretty self-explanatory though. You just have to either hook something onto these existing bolts to create a, uh, a bracket to keep it from moving. You could even bungee cord it, I suppose. Nobody can see it, so you wouldn't have to do a pretty job. You just have to keep the battery locked down. And then you would have a hidden battery and a clean custom look for your infield. Of course that doesn't just pertain to the Royal Enfields. Whatever bike you're building you probably find a place to hide something this small. Now I paid $99.99 for this battery so that's about double what I would pay for a standard lead acid battery for my Royal Enfield. Uh, you'll find it's about double the price of whatever battery for your bike normally runs. Um, you can go to their website, shiraipower.com, and they've got a calculator there. It'll tell you, you give it the model and uh, year of your bike, and then it will tell you how much the battery costs, and it will also tell you what size it is and where the plus and minus terminals are and give you measurements of the battery. So you will know what you're getting before you get it and what it's going to cost, and then you can order right on the website. Um, I wish I could tell you how well this thing works. I mean, it's going to work fine in the short term, but uh, it really take me seven or eight years to do an adequate review of this, and by then, uh, who knows, we'll all be in flying saucers at that point. But as far as I can tell, just for the size and the weight of it, it's worth it, especially if you're an anorexic sport biker who's trying to shave every possible pound off of their bike. It's a pretty cheap way to lose four pounds. So I uh, hope this helps, and uh, leave a comment and let me know if you buy one and how you like it and how it fit in your bike.